Hello everybody, uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. I want to uh, address what I consider to be the absurdity and even the dishonesty of the charge of uh, preaching a crossless gospel. Now, I've already made uh, dozens of videos on, on the subject uh, uh, in a playlist I have called Faith in Jesus, Not in Knowledge. And let me make it very clear. Uh, I believe that uh, Jesus Christ must be the object of our faith, not uh, our understanding of the facts of history, uh, the, the life of Jesus, the death of Jesus, the resurrection, uh, even the, the deity of Christ. Uh, all of those things that we know are true, uh, our knowledge and understanding of all of those facts uh, is not what is required to save us. Uh, the playlist is called Faith and Knowledge, Not in Jesus, because many people believe that you're saved by accumulating a certain amount of knowledge, agreeing to certain facts, and some people uh, list the facts as uh, you must believe in the death, uh, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, some people add to that list and say that you must also believe in the deity of Christ, and you must also believe in, uh, you know, well, who knows how many things people will add to the list. But many people believe that there are certain facts, a certain amount of knowledge that you must acquire and agree to in order to get saved. And I've always argued that uh, your, your faith is misplaced. Uh, don't put your faith for salvation in your ability to understand all the facts. Uh, but rather put your faith in the person. Uh, the, I, I've said before, the gospel does not save you. The Savior saves you. We need to have our faith in the Savior, the one who does the saving. His name is Jesus Christ. Now, I am uh, say, saying that uh, the, um, the charge against some people that uh, they are preaching a crossless gospel is absurd and even, I will take it this far and say it's dishonest. Because even though I believe that uh, a person uh, doesn't necessarily have to understand all the facts before they get saved, uh, they get saved simply by calling upon the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, the uh, the name of Jesus Christ means God saves. When we put our faith in God to save us rather than our, our own ability, uh, when we, and when we understand that this one we're calling on is named Jesus, when we put our faith in Jesus to do the saving and no longer rely on our own ability, so it's faith in Jesus, not, in faith, not faith in ourselves. Uh, when we do that, I believe that Jesus gives us the gift of eternal life because we put our faith in him. Now, uh, can a person be saved simply by believing in Jesus for salvation? Or do they have to uh, um, make mental assent and agree that certain facts about Jesus are correct? Do they have to understand them and agree to them? Uh, I, I've argued they don't have to understand the facts or agree to the facts first. However, here is the dishonesty uh, of, of the, the charge of preaching a crossless gospel. Uh, I'd like to, anybody to uh, uh, prove that I have ever preached a crossless gospel uh, on my statement of faith that is listed on my YouTube homepage, and it's listed also on the, in the description section of every one of my videos which I have almost 300 videos, every one of them contains this statement of faith. And if you read it, you'll see that uh, it's certainly not a crossless or resurrectionless message. 
It's right there for everyone to see. Uh, in, in all of my videos, I always include the deed of Christ, uh, the fact that he died for our sins and he rose from the dead and we are saved because of our putting our faith in him entirely and exclusively. So uh, never have I been negligent and just forgot to mention the deity of Christ, the resurrection, the death on the cross as atonement for our sins. And I certainly have never omitted it intentionally because I felt, oh, it's just not important. And I think that this, is, in fact, is also true of everyone else I know who is preaching and teaching uh, the, uh, uh, the message of salvation uh, as we get it from the Bible. I do not know of one person who is negligently or purposely leaving out the cross and the resurrection. I don't know of anyone. So this this idea that there is this cross, this gospel that's being preached is absurd. And if people are telling you that there are some people that are uh, not telling people about the cross and the resurrection, that's a lie. Everybody's telling, telling them. And if there is an individual or two or three uh, that I'm not aware of, that still does not mean that there's a movement of people that are uh, telling us that, uh, that uh, we should omit the cross and the resurrection. No one is omitting it, and certainly no one is saying that you should omit it. No. Obviously, uh, given enough time, uh, I want to tell them about the deity of Christ, about the uh, death on the cross for our sins, about his resurrection, and many, many more things about Jesus that are important and fascinating. There's nothing I love to do more than talk about Jesus Christ. And I think this is true about uh, most, if not all, of the people who are working in evangelism, telling people how to get saved. No one is omitting the cross. So this is much ado about nothing. Uh, some people are making a big fuss over it when it, it's not even a, really a problem. Uh, it doesn't exist. No one's omitting it. And some people are being so dishonest that they are telling people that are, there is a group of people that are leaving out the cross on purpose. So it really, it does disturb me, the fact that uh, uh, there are some people uh, charging, that, making this charge against uh, me and other people that, that uh, we're preaching a crossless gospel. Uh, nothing is further from the truth. We want to tell people about the cross, the resurrection, and everything else. Uh, so I, I just want to rebuke you. If you are... Uh, stirring up trouble, trying to make people all concerned about the fact that, oh, uh, there's this terrible problem in Christendom. Uh, people are preaching a crossless gospel. I'm saying that's an absolute lie. People are not preaching a crossless gospel. Even though I believe that a person doesn't necessarily have to understand all those facts before they get saved, I'm certainly not going to leave it off. I'm not going to accidentally or purposely leave it out of the message. So I hope this clears that up and I hope people will, you know, even the term crossless gospel is just so dishonest because nobody is preaching crossless gospels and if someone is, bring it to my attention uh, because uh, I just want you to tell me who's doing this. If they're doing it, I'm not aware of it. So. Finally, let me just say that if uh, this is all new to you, you don't understand anything I'm saying, uh, and you're, you don't even uh, have salvation by, because you never believed in Jesus Christ, I want to tell you now what you must do to be saved. The Apostle Paul answered that question. He said, what must you do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your faith completely in Jesus Christ, 
and he'll give you eternal life. Stop believing in your own ability. Reject that as, a, as an option. Uh, people, some people think that they can get to heaven without Jesus, without uh, anything, just based upon their own personal merit. Reject that and understand that that is futile. You cannot do it. And you need to be saved. And Jesus Christ is the sole saver, the sole guarantor of eternal life. He guarantees eternal life to everyone who comes to him for it. If you put your faith completely in Jesus, he'll give you eternal life. Now, what about the sin problem? Uh, well, yeah, man has been separated from God. There's been alienation, a separation, a barrier between man and God since Adam and Eve fell in the garden. Uh, but Jesus, who is God Almighty, he said, I'm going to become a man and I'll die and pay the sin penalty so that this barrier can be removed. That's what Jesus Christ did. And, and that's the significance of the cross. He paid for the sins of the whole world. That barrier is removed. Hallelujah. Now, he died and he was buried. And on the third day, he raised himself from the dead. He told us he would do it. And he said the reason for the resurrection is uh, to give us a sign. A sign so we'll know that he does have the power of life and death. So the cross pays for our sin. The resurrection proves that he has the power to give you life everlasting. Now, will you trust him? Will you put your faith in him? If you do, please put a message uh, uh, in the comments section. I'd love to hear it. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God. His name is Jesus Christ.